this video will be going over the Symbio 700 app configuration and using it in general so first thing you want to do is go to your app store Google Play Store and search for Symbio that was the first icon that popped up I'm gonna click open since I already have it installed and you'll notice at the login screen here you have a sign-in option you have a skip just hit the skip the sign-in options for trained employees only so you'll go to your Symbio 700 hit the Bluetooth button that'll activate the Bluetooth radio you'll see the blue lights flashing and it says it's waiting right now so it's looking for the symbol come back to my app and I don't see anything so I'm gonna hit the refresh button here at the top and now it's gonna look for any equipment that's sending out that that signal that Bluetooth signal and there it is we've got it now so I'm gonna click on it this unit's been powered down for a little bit so it's gonna prompt me with the uh, question do I want to update the app or sync it with my phone I'm gonna click yes that's a nice feature because it will timestamp any events faults things that uh, occur on this unit and you'll be able to keep track of when it occurred so the first screen that you see is the home screen and it gives you a quick uh, glance at what the unit's doing if I click on this top bar it's going to show me a little bit more information about the unit so model and serial number if I had one this is an aftermarket board or replacement board so I don't have a serial number of the unit but if you have an OE board it'll log that information for you and if you notice you had a little bit of a screen glitch on this this is updated real time I think every 30 seconds it repopulates so right now if I look at this screen I see that I'm in fan only mode and my thermostat G signal is closed all my other contacts are open right now so if I look at my thermostat it's showing fan on no call for cool so that's correct again this is a quick little uh, glance at it to tell you what the thermostat's calling for yeah if you have a call for cooling and you're only getting a fan signal well then you know that the uh, thermostat's not putting out the signal or your wires broken so again quick glance that way next is going to be the settings and a couple of the settings to go into here we'll do that before we go into the configuration but check out the system this arbitration method here I've seen a lot of them come from the factory where it has BS and en enabled building automation system which if you're using a standard 24 volt stat you don't want that you want it on standalone controller which I have the check mark on so I'm gonna hit cancel and leave it on that setting the other one that you might want to adjust change is this filter runtime hours it's programmed from the factory for 400 uh, runtime hours and once that 400 time 400 hours has elapsed you'll get a red fault light on this board and you'll get a service um, required fault basically it's not going to disable the unit but it is a fault that'll pop up and some people don't want to see that so if you want to remove that just simply change the time and that'll eliminate that fault from occurring um, what you really need to do is go to this configuration this is going to be something that you're going to do on every install um, this unit comes programmed for the outdoor unit but it doesn't know what air handler you have so you have to tell it what air handler you have so I'm going to hit the edit button here at the top and it's going to say hey whenever you're doing this it's going to stop the unit do you want to proceed I'm going to click yes and so now I can go in here and change my parameters so again like I told you before the outdoor unit should be programmed into it I look to make sure make sure it says it's a heat pump if it's heat pump or the voltage is correct what your tonnage is single or dual circuit you will need to set this up so this is your system type constant volume or variable volume um, I'm gonna leave it on constant here and indoor fan speed you can set up for single multi-variable most of the time you're gonna have the single speed so you would click that option the other thing that you really need to do is look at your heat so your primary heat staging on this one is heat pump which is great again that's programmed already but we need to look at our secondary so from the from default it's going to have not installed I already put the electric heat on it and then it's going to say um, how many stages one or two I've got one so I'm going to apply and go from there so again you have to tell it how many stages of heat you have 
and you can program all this other stuff if you want to uh, co2 sensors humidity sensors if you have them plug it into it while i'm on that note about heat strips let's come up here and look at the indoor unit stage one would plug into here stage two would plug into this port and also on this options module you want to make sure you assign your options module this way um, seven on the bottom five on the top you'll just rotate the little dials there to get it to 75 and that does it is explained on the install manual so back here to the app um, let's get out of here we're done with our settings now and we're good there so status kind of gives you a little broader view of what's going on with the unit I'm not going to look at that alarms this is where you'd have your fault code so if there was an active fault we would have a red banner across the top instead of the green so green's good red's bad you can look at the history you know the previous critical faults it'll log that and as i mentioned before it will show the, uh, the timestamp when it occurred you can look at the uh, non-critical faults these are faults that will still allow the unit to run at some sort of capacity but won't disable it completely and then we're going to go to tools down here a couple of the features to this would be a service test mode so in this screen you can actually run through all the uh, the tests so let's see if we hit fan on well I'm already in fan so let's stop that one let's go to cooling so when that happens you see I've got my lights that are turning on I'm gonna hit off now and you'll see them go away so cooling's off now let's go to cooling stage two Y1, Y2, all my LEDs are on. So that tells me, you know, I'm getting a signal out of the board to go into cool mode. So I can turn it off now. And you can do all these tests, whether it be for heat, defrost, electric heat, all options there. So I'm gonna get out of the test mode and some of the other features. You can export the data logs. So all your runtime history and everything, you can export it if you want to service you can reset your fault codes your diagnostics these are other resets you can do as far as compressor fan motors um, which is a nice feature let's say you replace a compressor you can reset the runtime on it so you're actually logging the new component runtime or start here's your filter timer reset if you do get that fault code click that and it'll clear it Another good uh, feature here under the options module, if you have it, it'll tell you if it's communicating or not, and a way to reset that IMC link if you need to. Let's go back. Um, what else we got here? Backup. So you can back up the, uh, the program, all your configurations on here if you want to, and you can carry that over to another split system. So you got 20 split systems on this one structure and all your configurations are the same. You can back it up to a thumb drive. Uh, thumb drive port is right here. And you can move it to the other system if you want to. Update firmware, restart controller. Uh, you can download updates via the web as far as the firmware goes and it's just going to correct issues that they might find in development. So that's all those. Let's do one test. And I'm going to throw a bug in here just so you can see what it'll look like with a fault so I'm gonna unplug one of my my pressure switches so let's go into service test mode and we'll put it back on cool and watch the lights so we get a compressor one Y2 and then Y2 goes away and now we've got a red fault so I know there's an issue it's running in Y1 Y2 briefly came on but it kicked off so we'll come over here and we will look at the alarms now and I'm going to hit refresh and now you see I've got the red banner across the top one active alarm and it is low pressure circuit trip so I know what that fault is much 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 more better than the uh, old Reliatel two blinky flash code that you had so I'm going to get out of the test mode now see if my fault goes away currently yep so low pressure switch is good now so that's it that's a quick rundown of the app again if you are setting one up for the first time key things to look at is your system type configure your blower configure the heat strip and then run it through the test modes go to that test mode and make sure your fans running your cool your heat and so forth 
and that'll give you a, a good uh, start to getting the system commissioned. Thanks guys.